Well hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wildy Garden. And in this video we're taking a look once more at my own wildlife garden and seeing what's changed in the last month since I did the last video. So if you haven't seen that video already I'll put a link at the end of this video so you can check that out. See how it looks in May. We're now in June. Everything's at its kind of zenith if you like. So let's go and see what we can find. Well here we are then. Things are... <laughs> A little bit more jungle-like since the last video and if we start with the jasmine this is the jasmine i will apologize by the way in advance if you hear any plane noise we're not far from south end airport so a bit of light plane traffic at the moment apologies if that interrupts us anyway shouldn't disrupt proceedings too much but this jasmine which you can see is getting a little bit dry um it's a jasmine officinal clotted cream, lovely flower on this, really good for insects. And uh, if you saw the last video, you'll remember me saying about having a, um, a nest of a robin in there until unfortunately the squirrel came and ate the eggs, which is always a problem in a garden that has trees in it, probably likely to get visited by squirrels. Anyway, that is looking absolutely fabulous, not flowered yet, but we'll be doing a little later. And as you can see, the rose now on top of the arch is just absolutely stunning. Lovely scent to it as well. Uh, we'll go and have a close look at that in a second. But yeah, the jasmine uh, needs a bit of water. I mean, it's so hot at the moment. It's 28, 29 degrees today here in Essex. So it is very hot. And um, yeah, a lot of things have been suffering. The greenhouse, if you've seen the recent videos on the uh, additional greenhouse that I've just took on for the wildy garden plants and everything else, then yeah, I've been having to water down there a lot just to keep everything going. Anyway, so if we take a look at the right hand side, I've got a little, just in a pot, but a lovely little Ceanothus. Um, this is a Ceanothus autumn blue, which has this lovely little purple, uh, blue flower. Gorgeous little plant. Uh, so that's gonna go, I'm gonna try and find a space for that in the garden this autumn. Budliers, as ever, doing almost too well. <laughs> no, they're fine. They're doing great. Hopefully they'll be flowering within the next two to three weeks. Uh, a little white budlier in the middle, still struggling a bit. It's not really liked it since I've put it here. This is the part in between two houses where it gets sun for only a couple of hours a day so um yeah not doing too well and of course these uh these are actually multicolored buddleias these are like a there's a lovely variety they're kind of the flowers go from purple through to orange through to yellow so they're really really nice can't wait to show you those on the next video and you might have guessed the hop which i can pretty much touch from here is doing rather well on the arch again a little bit too well so the hop goes down to the bottom of the two posts on the right hand side of the arch there's one on each post probably could have done with planting just one <laughs> but it's actually going up and it's almost taking over the rows a little bit at the top there so uh, a cutback on the hop needed that's for sure what else have we got oh yes the honeysuckle <clears throat> honeysuckle's doing well but this rose i mean nice open flower there great for access for bees and other pollinating insects but just a pure bouquet of these gorgeous white flowers and actually holly blue just went over there I don't know if you saw that uh, it is reverting to the original dog rose which of course is the original native rose that most roses originate from and you can see a few more flowers up the top of the dog rose Sort of more pinky a lot smaller flower uh, but that is just looking magnificent at the moment really enjoying that and then yes if we come down you can see woven through it um this beautiful honeysuckle which is uh again very very good for instance very good for moths and um a really nice one for attracting birds to your garden. And you probably remember in the last video, if you saw it, the blackbird nest, which was up there again, unfortunately predated by the flipping squirrels. 
it got the eggs on that one as well so yes not too wonderful but um as you can see two nests within three meters of each other the jasmine had the robin and the blackbird here in the back of the rose so um yeah great cover for birds combination of the rose i'm just going to go up so you can see even on the underside of this arch look absolutely full of flowers this rose smells divine really does and then of course we've got the hop which is just a towering wall of vegetation i think hops would probably take over the planet given half a chance the sort of tendrils on this one are enormous look i mean it's still only mid-season but um huge anyway hop larval food plant for the comma butterfly so hopefully we'll get some uh, once this generation of commas emerge we'll get some eggs laid on that and hopefully i can show you some caterpillars later on in the season now here we've got a bit of proof in the pudding was it just flown off no we've got the snowberry which in the last video i said would be flowering soon and now it is and it's being visited by a bee of which looks like an early bumblebee yeah it's quite a small flower on this i'll try and show you A small discreet flower on this snowberry but really good for bees also a secondary larval food plant for the holly blue butterfly so nice to have in the garden and then we're sort of walking through we've still got <laughs> a trail of roses coming this side over the arch i'll turn back so you can have a look at a minute oh, look. another bee visiting the snowberry anyway let's go into the main part of the garden shall we which has come on leaps and bounds since I last gave you a tour. We'll come on to the main meadow and those features in a moment. Uh, but if you just look back now at that rose, again, just absolutely fabulous. Really beautiful. Got some pots here still of silver birch, hawthorn, gelder rose, hazel, which uh, take a bit of water in this time of year but um, providing some really nice cover. Got my giant buddleia over there again, which is great. Should be flowering in fact, I don't know if you can see, it's just starting to produce some flower spikes. So hopefully in the next two weeks, we'll have some nice color on that and nectar for butterflies, of course. Seeing the first red admiral in the garden today. Well, second red admiral, if you like, not seen many this year. Uh, these are a few remnants of Marjorie Garden stuff. We've got some uh, bits with potting on at the moment. Um, got lots of oxide daisies that are taking really nicely. A bit more red camping to pot on, so coming soon to an online store near you. Oh, and I must show you, this is an accidental really, but this bramble that's just poked its way through from the background, absolutely covered in bees at the minute. It's only just started flowering. But there's two or three around it. I believe that's a bufftail bumblebee. Correct me if I'm wrong. I need to gen up on my bumblebee idea a little bit, but you can see them just loving these flowers. I know brambles can be a problem in a garden, and this one has gone a bit berserk. However, it is just a vital resource. And in a woodland setting, bramble is possibly one of the best supplies of nectar for all your summer species that are coming out towards the end of June into July. Things such as silverwash fritillary, ringlet, meadow brown, and uh, the usual culprits you can find in woodland. White admiral as well. Yeah, and I've got uh, a little jasmine in the pot down here, which is a bezanium, which is really, really good for the bees. Probably hence the name. Absolutely gorgeous little pink flower on it. Doing really well. Uh, and then we have some purple loose strife, which will be in flower very soon in my one of my barrel ponds. Which has got a bit clogged up with duckweed. I need to get some cleared out of that, but um, still plenty of life. And then we've got the dog rose, which is growing very well, as ever. <laughs> I've pruned a few bits off this side. Unfortunately, I mean, it's a shame I wasn't able to do this video 
about 10 days ago because you can see how many flowers were on this dog rose. Just absolutely covered it was. But a lovely flower, same as what was around the corner where the other rose over the arch is reverting to. Really, really good for bees, that one. And a few pots, been doing a few pots lately. Got some pinks, uh, which have been visited by a Red Admiral and a few other bits and bobs. Uh, we've got a pot here of some natives. We've got some Red Campion. We've got some Salvia, which is a Salvia, the native Salvia. Um, Wild Clary or Meadow Sage, it's sometimes called. And then these lovely purple toe flax, which are probably classed as a weed in most instances, but I think they're brilliant. I mean, they, they need a little bit of water, as you can see, but they are a cracking flower, visited by a lot of insects. And in the southeast, where we are of the country, they do act as the larval food plant for the toad flax brocade moth, which is a great little moth. Um, well, I'll say that. I've never actually seen the moth. Uh, the caterpillar is brilliant. The caterpillar, there you go. Just having a visit from a, what looks like a solitary bee there. I'm trying to get the camera to focus, there you go. Isn't it great when nature, nature acts on cue? So yes, toe flax brocade, um, lovely little caterpillar, a bit similar to the mullein moth if you are familiar with that which is um which i do find on the figwort water figwort in the meadow next to the pond which i'll come on to in a minute and you'll notice probably the difference like even a month later the the shade at this time of day i mean it's about half past 12 in the day now but because i have this wonderful tree of heaven a very noisy blackbird again which we don't mind but this tree of heaven acts as a great stopping point for so many birds to come down then into the garden um, I mean at the moment we've got a blackbird you can perhaps just see a collared dove up there we've got a wood pigeon sat at the back there there's always birds in this tree even though it's not a native it's still great habitat for birds there's often house sparrows in it which you can hear chirping away in the background incidentally the nest on the back of the house is now on its second brood of house sparrows uh, sorry, the, the nest box on the back of the house, second brood of house sparrows, which is wonderful. They've had their first clutch and they've fledged now, which is really nice. So yes, a great tree. But the downside of the tree is that it casts a bit of shade onto the meadow, which, you know, swings and roundabouts. If I had about five acres, then things would be a bit different. <laughs> However, you work with what you've got and... I'm certainly chuffed with how this is looking at the moment. Um, okay, so we'll come on to the pond and the meadow in a minute, but this buddleia is growing very well. It's um, a standard buddleia, so sort of a purpley lilac flower. Very thick trunk, that one. Uh, if I just come down to underneath the buddleia, my pots for pollinators. If you saw that video originally, you perhaps remember me doing some oxide daisies and a piece of cat mint and <laughs> they've sort of got away with me a bit this year i didn't chop them back in the last video or even before that and now they are kind of sprawling all over the place but providing nectar and looking pretty brilliant or they will be doing very soon when a few more buds come out and then the barrel pond which um there is a pond in there i promise you has uh a fair bit of life in it believe it or not i've got a little native lily here but underneath the edges i have got some brook lime which is a great little flower very very similar to the speedwell if you know your speedwells lovely little flower that is uh, and then uh, a giant tower of water mint which smells fabulous and will be flowering in july probably in the next video and creating some more nectar. So that's the barrel pond, sort of tucked away, but still playing its part. So let's move on to some of these pots in the front of the meadow. This is a recent addition. 
uh, we have. I did start and I got distracted with the toe plaques. <laughs> so these lovely pinks, which are just a wonderful splash of colour at the moment, providing some nice nectar. And the salvias, one of my favourites at this time of year. And if I just go to the one in this pot, again we've got a solitary bee visiting. So again, this is salvia caradonna. I believe that is a nemorosa or Ostfriesland, one of the two. I do plant both in many of the garden projects that I do. So, and then this year I splashed out and bought some of these brilliant Circium. Now these are Circium rivular. They're actually a thistle, but they are just loved by bees. I'll put a couple of little clips in now. Typically there's none on, a, none on it, but there's been bees on there all morning and all week actually. And here down at the salvia again, sorry, we've got some live action of a... <laughs> you can see it amongst the purple spires. I promise you there is a, an early bumblebee. Nectaring away. These things are just, it's almost like they're drunk. They just have a drink, drop off the top of it. They work their way up the spire and then almost drop off down onto the next one and work their way up again. A bit like a tree creeper if you know the habits of a tree creeper, which I don't expect you to, but <laughs> too many hours spent in a wood as a child, I guess. Anyway, salvias, fabulous at the moment. Foxgloves, who doesn't love a foxglove? It'd be a bit mad not to really. Bees just in and out of these things all day long. And I've been planting loads of them on the recent projects I've been planting up and they just look incredible. So let's go over to this pot here. I'll just sit in my left hand chair so you get a bit of an idea of what my view is. Pan out a little bit so you can see. Uh, when I do get a spare minute or two, which is very rare, I'll tell you what, there's not many times this time of year with the landscape inside that I'm able to actually sit and enjoy the garden because I'm out all over the country. Off up to Scotland for five or six days tomorrow to go and look at some work, so yes. And uh, hopefully a couple of days later as well. So stay tuned on that one, should have you a Scotland video. We're going in pursuit of, in particular, a couple of butterflies that you won't find very commonly in the UK. So in this pot we have some more salvia. We've got some of these uh, varieties of thrift, Almeria, which are lovely. A lot of bees and insects visiting those. And some thyme, just some common thyme, but really, really good as a nectar source. And they'll just sort of trail over the edge. They've only been potted in the last week, so everything looking a bit fresh, but soon will still fill out. Uh, we've got here some more erysimum. This is the Bowles Mauve that you might have heard me mention about before. That's doing really well. Uh, got some of these new uh, metal sculptures. The other half bought some and put them through the meadow. I absolutely love them. Don't mind a little bit of art in the garden. I think it works quite well in the right places from time to time. And these are an a garden variety of scabious. This isn't field scabious, it's very, very similar. It's supposed to be multicolour, but so far I've only seen this kind of lilac -y colour. But that's not a complaint because the bees have been all over that. I'll put a clip in now of some of the insects that have been visiting that today. Uh, and then, yeah, the only thing that's really gone over so far this year is the, um, the red camping, which you probably remember from the last video. A profusion of pink along the front. Um, I've got a verbena. Bonariensis, about to come out in the middle of June now, so yep, they are about to get going. Oh, what was I saying about the Circium? There we have a bee if the camera will focus. Doesn't want to, but anyway, you can see <laughs> there is a bee on that. So I'm going to come back out around here. So we have in this pot. Uh, of a bascom, which is really good one, but like the natives of the UK are moth mullein, dark mullein, and grape mullein. This is a garden variety, but still just as good for butterflies and bees. I've also got a bit more bowls mauve, 
a bit more of these Armeria just here and another scabious I believe which has not quite opened out yet but will do soon Red Valerian behind it of course uh, which the uh, Red Admiral has been on this morning which was really really nice so yeah a few pots there which got some lovely offer uh, a lovely offer on these pots some really nice ones proper ceramic pots uh, just if you are planting up any pots uh, do use peat free compost guys I shouldn't have to say it but it's amazing how many garden centres still sell peat based compost um, and I'm pleased to announce actually that all of the seedlings you saw behind me that we are growing for the Wildry Garden shop are now 100% peat free we are growing those from peat free compost so might be a tad more expensive than some of the competitors however we want to be as environmentally friendly as possible so that's what we have there anyway moving round there is a path there i promise you we'll go down it in a minute <laughs> okay we've got a plane incoming so it might get a bit noisy in a second but bear with me So this fabulous plant, this rather tall Verbena bonariensis replica, almost, is a native wildflower to the UK, believe it or not. This is valerian, a common valerian. Ah, oh, and the bees and the insects that have been on this. It's sort of going over now, but I'll put a clip in now of what it has been like. It seems to have been flowering for weeks, but clearly not, because it's only about four weeks since I did the last video, but it must have been flowering for two to three weeks at least probably for three weeks i would have thought and it's just been an absolute block of nectar for so long absolutely love it i've had to prop some of the stems up because they got a bit uh, heavy at the top and started leaning so we've got some little metal spikes which we put in to keep those upright but they really are such a fabulous plant for insects they just look amazing Ooh, holly blue hopefully you got that it's gone up around the dog rose yeah, lots of holly blues in the garden. Not much else butterfly-wise. It's been a really bad year for butterflies in my books. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. But small white, green vein white, large white. Hardly had a spring brood in the garden. We saw a couple of green vein whites early on in April, but one or two small whites. That was about it. So, Valerian, yes, just get some in your garden. It's brilliant. I challenge you to find a garden that's got common valerian in it this is different by the way to the red valerian which is this one here centranthus rubra which is a really good one for hummingbird hawk moths uh, but um, this is common valerian and it is just as good for wildlife it does love a, a, a damp spot so if you've got somewhere boggy a wet clay border it'll absolutely thrive these have all self-seeded it started off as a little clump let's focus the camera a little clump at the back of the pond and they spread right the way down this border there was some verbena bonariensis in there but i think it's a little bit damp for it so they've kind of petered out um teasels as well i've got the teasels here which i'll fight my way past in a moment so the main meadow look how this has come on one of my favorite grasses here coxfoot which is a really good plant um component for a meadow Quite a few butterflies, skippers and things lay their eggs on the grasses, or on this grass, um, along with Yorkshire Fog, which if I get down here, you can see has these lovely soft seed heads. At this time of year, the grass is just very, very soft to the touch. Uh, beautiful. So Yorkshire Fog, another good component to a meadow in terms of grass. Grass is very, very important in a meadow setting really really important there's at least seven species of butterfly in the uk that lay their eggs on grass things such as gatekeeper ringlet meadow brown essex skipper small skipper large skipper so yes really really good to have grasses in a meadow and they make great potential for um often of an evening if you go out of an evening when common blue butterflies are on the ring and brown argus they will actually sit um, on top of these stems and uh, roost on them in a meadow so if you ever wonder where butterflies sleep now you know <laughs> not all of them but some of them so this water figwort absolute beast of a plant that is that was just one single stem when i first put it in 
now look at it i'm hoping really hoping in the next video i can show you some malayan moth caterpillars on that because they absolutely love it and i've got another one just over there they're almost solely pollinated by wasps so but a really good one for wildlife in general more grasses looking through there just looking beautiful at the moment one or two token poppies i did so a bit of a wildflower mix through here in the spring but um i, I missed the missed the window for my autumn sowing and the spring sowing just haven't been as successful because everything here is established so obviously it just took off a lot sooner before the cornfield annuals could really get going one or two but um not too many uh just quick note actually bird bath make sure you water your water provide water sorry for birds all year round this time of year of course very very hot uh, important to do that so we've got the buddleia on the other side uh, that should be flowering soon got some foxgloves shame i can't really get to them but more in the woodland border over there we have um the hebe there and the elder is looking absolutely beautiful at the moment the elder is this one here um elder flower cordial i'm sure you're all familiar with comes from the elder flowers of course an elder really just one that you don't see in garden settings it's such a shame because it's such a, a beautiful sort of umbellifer like flower really good for insects this time of year got a uh, cherry trees growing back from where i coppiced it back um, a couple of years ago so that's starting to form a nice shape again under the canopy of the tree of heaven sycamore and everything in full leaf now so some nice elements in the meadow again as we say the buttercups were looking beautiful. They're just going over now. There's still a few knocking around. It's so frustrating. I want to really do you like a, a video a week at this time of year because so much changes. Um, now this geranium uh, just blew in naturally. This is geranium wargrave, but it's really, really good for butterflies and bees. So I've kind of let that go there next to the pond. We have some more purple loose strife, which will be definitely out next time I do you a video. And the giant teasels, which I am going to leave through the winter time because I mean, you can just see the flower heads forming, actually. Um, these teasels, very, very prickly. Certainly on the stems. And under the leaf, they have kind of on the midrib, they have a, a lot of spikes, which uh, have a tendency to catch your legs as you walk past, which I did know about, but... Um, couldn't bring myself to take them out so these are going to be flowering within the next well week to 10 days it looks like maximum but i've let them in here because they are so good for insects when they get going and also for the goldfinches in the winter time the heads provide a lot of natural food for them now here in the right hand border was something i was hoping to show you but um sadly it's gone over now the sweet woodruff i'll try and put a picture in now of it it did look fabulous um, and was visited by holly blue butterflies for nectar and other insects as well. And also the dame's violet, again, gone over now. Um, sometimes a larval food plant for the orange tip caterpillars. But I've not had many visiting this year, orange tips, and equally I've not managed or I've not had time to do an egg count on any of the garlic mustard that I've got down the bottom of the garden. So I will have a look. Um, we've got in here this is some more of the meadow clary or clary sage wild sage many names this thing has absolutely beautiful quite a discreet little flower again similar to the uh, purple toe flax um, and salvias of course being a salvia but um, a nice one for a border fatsia there and then we've got the valerian that we've already looked at Robin box which hasn't been used this year on the fence so fight my past seasons there is a pond in there I promise you <laughs> this time of year it gets a bit uh, clogged up with greenery but it's still providing a lot of habitat for frogs and newts there's still plenty in the garden and over this side we have a huge ever-expanding clump of hemp agrimony which I'm going to have to thin back. It's almost coming into flower at the top. You might be able to just put it on two times zoom. You might be able to just see the tops of the flower heads there and there. So that will be 
certainly in flower next time I do the video. Um, so yeah, the, the, the garden is going to have a lot more colour next time. You might think it's got a reasonable amount now, but wait till early July. <laughs> so, let's have a wander through. So my bench has become a bit redundant this year. I can't actually get to it very easily. Fighting past everything else. However, in the border, we've got a lovely block of Napita, Six Hills Giant, really good for bees and butterflies, of course. And more red Valerian. Again, there's the woodruff that's gone over, sweet woodruff. Just got a waft of the Valerian then. Some people like it, some people don't. It's not too bad a smell, I don't think. So the, yes, this wasn't in flower last time. It wasn't far off, but the Napita, Six Hills Giant, almost second to none for bees. It's just so good. There's not too many about at the moment, I think, because they're up on the salvias at the top end of the garden in a bit more sun, but uh, really doing well. I've had to tie this back, actually, because uh, it was just flopping right over the path, so I was kind of stepping over it, risking damaging it. Uh, I don't think we mentioned them last time, but I've got some sedum, Autumn Joy, along the edge of the path, which will be out a little bit later in the summer, providing good um, kind of autumn nectar for particularly red admirals. Uh, but yeah, this red valerian quite something at this time of year and it's been flowering a little while now and it does tend to have a second flush as well so uh, August time it's nice you know particularly when we get painted ladies and things they really like it of course it will be a, a native to where they're coming from in the Mediterranean which is where it originated so let's have a look into the meadow lots more grasses at this end this is your all Yorkshire fog just so lovely and soft um, yeah, the wildflowers, they are not as prolific prolific as I'd hoped. Down this end, it's a bit more shady. Um, but the problem is when you've got an elder tree providing that much nectar, you sort of, oh, it's very difficult to try and choose what stays and what goes. You know, do you cut back the trees to let more light in or do you sacrifice the meadow somewhat to allow the trees to provide their own fruit and then the berries of course the berries of elders loved by a lot of birds in the autumn months uh, we've got a lot of hedge bed straw at the back there that's going to be um, flowering in the next week by the looks of it it's a lovely sort of white fluffy cloud like structure when it flowers really nice got one or two token poppies down here like i say um, a few oxide daisies as well which are in swathes at the moment along the verges roadside verges but of course they're going over as well uh, a little bit i've been out a little while now but next time hopefully there'll be a bit more in flower for you in the meadow itself there's a lot more knapweed and things to come lots more purple um so we're nearing the bottom of the garden now so my garlic mustard has not been too brilliant this year uh, it was so cold in april um and then yeah, just put the butterflies back, put the growth of these things back, and with them being a little bit shaded as well, it's not been the best of year for them, so I'm yet to do a proper egg count. Although, you know, the caterpillars should be well on the way now with the orange tip. Just doing a quick scout, see if I can find you any, but <laughs> I can't really see any. They they tend to kind of um, lay up the, up the seed pods as they get bigger. Lovely sort of grey-green colour, the caterpillars, with a bit of a white underside um, or palish strip down the side. And they, uh, yeah, fantastic. And they just kind of eat the developing seed pods. But I think as well, because this is in shade, uh, the seed pods haven't really developed too well so far. So I think probably the uh, adult female orange tips can detect this and realise that there's actually then not that much food for the larvae when they develop. Clever things, these butterflies. Uh, yes, yeah, so the garlic mustard, I shall keep trying on that one. Uh, yeah, these are those metal spikes I was talking about. This is a spare one, but um, what I was using to kind of prop back things along the path, because as you can see, otherwise, <laughs> there would be zero access to the bottom of the garden. Um, but um, there we go. We've got some yarrow here as well, by the way, which is not far off flowering. And uh, there are some more poppies about to flower, flower here in the middle of the meadow. Buttercups, as I said earlier, sort of gone over a little bit now, but um, have been looking lovely. There's a lovely swathe of them, as you can probably just make out 
right the way up this middle. Reasonably well in shade, of course, of course, buttercups, so not too much problem there. And we've planted up some more chimney pots down here, which you can probably see better from the back. We've got a couple of standalone wisterias in the middle, which are um, that's an amethyst falls, which has been a lovely flower. They've gone over now, but um, they're on a nice little cane system, which I really enjoyed. I've got more of a bascom uh, in the middle there, sort of leaning up and over. Verbena about to flower soon. And there's scabious in there as well, which looks like it could do with a drink. Got another lovely pink rose and flower in the border. Forgive me, I'm not brilliant on my non-native roses, as you might have guessed. Uh, the sycamore on a box up there that hasn't been used this year. Hopefully we'll do next year. Holly tree. A sort of the flowers not done very well on this this year. I don't know whether the cold weather um, did for them a bit, but really not done a lot. So, uh, yeah. Whether we'll have much of a brood of holly blue butterflies off that the spring brood lay on the holly, the autumn brood lay on ivy. So I've got some ivy there and some ivy down the bottom, right down the bottom of the garden. Um, so we'll see on that one. A few pots left over here, a few things that I've got to move to the greenhouse, but uh, a few buddleys and things. Always nice to have a bit more greenery than less. Uh, we've got the Wygela above, which is flowering, which has actually been really, really good for bees. I'll show you the flower there. It's just beautiful at the moment. Sort of going over a little bit in places, but again, providing lots and lots of nectar. And then I welcome you to Clematis Corner. <laughs> so this is the old man's beard, which you might remember from the previous video, which is growing from the bottom of the fence. This is my second relaxation spot that I've not actually used yet. <laughs> A big hollyhock in that pot. They like to grow in that pot year on year. Hawthorn obviously gone over since the last video, uh, but we'll be providing a lot of berries already kind of forming on the ends of the branches now, if you can see. Some berries forming there. Um, so yes, this is the wild Clematis, Clematis vitalba, the old man's beard, which hasn't flowered yet. We'll be doing next month, but um, yeah, I think that needs a little bit of a haircut as well before we lose the Wygela. So <laughs> it's uh, a great climate and providing some brilliant nesting potential. If there's not a nest, if there's not a nesting robin in there next year, I'll eat my own hat. Not that I really own a hat at the moment, but it's just brilliant. Really, really good. That's only three seasons growth and it's completely covered you know three four meters worth of fence just fantastic so dense in there i'll just show you a little bit in the middle lovely dense cover yes and keep your eyes peeled by the way because once this has had a cut back i'll just zoom out a bit on this area once this has had a cut back i'm going to be building something down here for wildlife so stay tuned on that one guys exciting announcement to come when i get five minutes or a couple of days actually so comments below as to what you think i might be adding to this part of the garden but i think that about concludes our tour hopefully from here you can see the extent of the meadow, the shrubs, trees, everything is a bit jungle-like at the moment, but it's just alive with stuff, mostly insects. But we've got frogs still, we've got newts around, we've got slow worms, house sparrows, blackbirds, collared doves, blue tits, great tits, goldfinches, you name it, it mostly visits the, gar visits the garden. Jay as well, Jay visits on a regular basis. So. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope this has given you a bit of an idea as to how oh, last little visit from a holly blue. <laughs> right, so I'll come down this end and finish on a shot from the top. Let's take you for one last wander up the path. 
say goodbye to the valerian because that won't be here on the next vid well it will be just not looking so good <laughs> so thanks for watching guys really appreciate it let me know how many metal butterflies you've seen on the tour <laughs> and uh, drop your comments in the box or in, in the comment section below obviously any questions i'll be happy to answer them and uh please feel free to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel if you've enjoyed it and i'll be certainly sure to bring you more garden tours of my own garden other gardens and all the ways in which you can help wildlife and videos to come thanks for watching i'll see you soon mm -hmm.